everyone. Thank you for joining me today uh, for this short talk as part of the Better Learning Leadership Conference. My name is Ben Knight. I'm the Director for Language Research at Cambridge University Press. And today I want to talk to you about professional development for teachers on bilingual programmes, or as we call them, English as a medium of learning programmes. So just to clarify uh, some of the terms here, when we say English as a medium of learning, we really mean that as a umbrella term for a range of different bilingual type programmes. Uh, and those programmes may vary in how far they focus on developing language skills and how far they focus on mastering the content. Uh, and we tend to use the words CLIL or EMI for those different uh, balances, but they're all similar in that they're all about integrating learning of language with learning content. So how do we think about the development of those of the teachers for such courses? Well, I think it's worth stepping back a little bit and thinking about if you want to deliver a bilingual program or an EML program, uh, there are a number of things that you need to get right uh, in terms of the uh, setting up the program and developing the program. So one of the things, of course, you need are the right teachers or the teachers with the right skills for EML. Um, and that includes their language skills, their pedagogy skills, their awareness, their attitudes. There's a number of things around that. You also want learners with a, a sufficient skill to follow the programs. Um, you need uh, a curriculum which is suitable for EML. Um, and which is clear about what the objectives are of the programme, especially in terms of the balance between language, how far language learning is part of the curriculum. You need a pedagogy, an agreed approach or teaching methodology for the programme. You need suitable resource, resources which are adapted to or, or appropriate for the level of language of your students. Uh, and you need an approach to assessment which is in line with the curriculum, the objectives of the programme and which uh, focuses on the things which you want to give priority to. So that's the overall uh, approach to thinking about delivering a good bilingual programme. But let's focus particularly on the teachers and their professional development. And we would say that the, the, you could say there are three areas that you want to focus on. Uh, in our experience. Uh, the first one is making sure that the teachers have a shared understanding of what the CLIL or EMI bilingual approach is for your institution, because the effectiveness of this will depend on a shared approach. The second thing is you need to make sure they've got sufficient language skills that are needed particularly for an EML programme. And thirdly, you need to make sure that they've got the right teaching methodology, the right pedagogy for which is effective for EML. So those are the three main areas. So let's look at those in a bit more detail. Um, so the first point I was saying that the, the need for a shared approach and part of the challenge of that is that the institution itself has to agree what its approach is, um, which not all institutions do when they introduce bilingual programmes. So first of all, there needs to be clarity about what the objectives of the programme are. To what extent is the goal um, to do with language development or to do with content or about internationalisation? What really are the objectives? Is there a particular level of English which you're aiming for, for example? The second thing which is really important is that the approach recognises that students on an EML programme have additional issues to students on a programme in their own language. Uh, that has to be recognised, needs to be understood what those challenges are, which are not just about um, specific vocabulary, they're much wider about the range of things that the problems they might have in terms of communication and participation. Also, um, the teachers need to understand what the institution's approach is to the use of the mother tongue, the L1, and also other ways that students and teachers might draw on the linguistic resources of their students. You know, what is their attitude? How acceptable? When is it acceptable? When is it encouraged? 
Then there needs to be an agreement about supporting language development, that there is a need for it, who is doing it, how they're doing it. And that relates to the next point, which is about what is the role of an EML teacher, whether they are focused on subject or language, what are their roles in that? Uh, and it might include things like are there use, are there language assistants used, etc. And then finally, the, in the institution needs to have a clear policy in terms of its assessment. What is it assessing? What language is it assessing content in? Is it assessing all four skills with equal weight, etc.? So having established those and having made sure that teachers all buy into that, they understand and buy into that uh, approach for your institution. Uh, another area then you need to look at is making sure your students, your teachers have got the skills, language skills needed for an EML program. To some extent, of, we are talking both about language teachers and subject teachers, although often it's the, the subject teachers that you might be most concerned about. So we tend, when we talk about language skills in EML programs, uh, we tend to think of three areas of language. There's BICS, CL and CALP. I'm not sure if you're familiar with these terms, but BICS is basic interpersonal communication skills. It's, it's kind of general social English. Uh, and it's important for EML teachers because it's the language they would use for uh, establishing a relationship through chatting with the students. But of course, it's not really the heart of the EML program. The second area is the classroom language. That's the language which is used to um, to manage activities in the class. Uh, things like giving homework, starting activities, uh, dealing with interruptions, asking for clarification, all those kind of general activities that happen in the class. They're quite routine. It's quite easy to do it. It's probably not, again, at the heart of EML, but it's a good way of establishing the, um, the, the immersion in the language. Uh, and then the third area, which is probably more at the heart of it, which is we call cognitive ac academic language proficiency. It's the, it's the general academic language. It's the language which is needed to explain new content in the subject. What are you going, how are you going to explain a new concept? So when we think about that last area, which, as I said, is probably the, the most important part, um, there is a lot of it is about vocabulary, but it's, within vocabulary we can talk about concept rich and general academic um, or support language. And concept rich is the language is the language which where you're learning both the term in English and you're having to learn the concept behind it because it, it might be an important concept in that subject. Now. That's often where people get focused because they think, ah, that's what's important for this subject. But actually, that's really not so important because that's what you're learning through the through the lessons. What is more difficult or more important is the general academic language which is used to explain those concepts. That's what your students have to understand, and that's what your teachers need to be aware of as being the, the, the most important language for their students. Uh, and kind of related to that, there's a lot of language around functional language, the, the language they need to use for classifying, for analysing, for doing things like evaluating, concluding, plus the language they need to manage a discourse, whether that's structuring or signposting within a written text, but even, even in speaking, especially if you're giving a talk, you need to um, know how to manage the discourse. OK, so um, and then the last area which is really important is skills. Uh, that's the reading, writing, listening, speaking skills. Uh, and it's important to make decisions about which of those are most important. You also need to recognise that students will vary in terms of which ones are uh, need work and which don't. Some may be really good at reading, but fail to be able to speak what they understand. Um, and sometimes it's the other way around. They can be very confident speakers, but actually be struggling to understand what's been said in the lesson. Uh, and then pronunciation, just to make a small point that pronunciation with the EML, particularly the focus has to be on comprehensibility, not on accent, um, uh, anything like that. It is really, can that pronunciation be understood? Then we would want to move on to uh, teaching methodology, the pedagogy. So what, what's important when it comes to EML? Because assuming your teachers know how to teach, but what do they need to think particularly for EML? Uh, and there are six areas which we um, think of as being important for 
the AML teachers to think about. First one is simply adapting their language to their students' L2 proficiency. And there are various techniques, uh, what's called accommodation or convergence, is where you, you think about what your students are most likely to understand and you take it to their, it might be using cognates in, with words which are cognates in their language, in their L1. Um, simply simplifying the language or grading it is another way to, to adapt. Uh, and also using the L1, uh, drawing on whatever resources they've got. So th those techniques are an important part of the methodology. But also is to understand that part of their role is to develop their students' proficiency in the language. Uh, and that means, first of all, identifying what the students lack, what they need to develop in terms of knowledge and skills, and then having an awareness of what activities they can do which actually support that language development. Uh, a third point is that when you're in a bilingual program, it's quite difficult, obviously, for the students to interact, to participate, because they've got both the content and the language to deal with. And as a result, bilingual programs can sometimes lack interactivity. They can become quite flat and the, the students become passive. So teachers need to put additional effort, extra effort, into creating that interaction and, and engagement in terms of variety, designing perhaps shorter activities that create more interaction and engagement, uh, providing more scaffolding. The way that they use feedback can have an impact on interaction. Um, important areas, speaking skills, a lot of what goes on in a class is happening through speaking and, your, and the student's ability to show whether they've understood something can be affected by how well or how confident, comfortable they feel about speaking. So that becomes particularly important for knowing how well students have understood the subject. And similarly, if students want to be able to do well in their subject, almost certainly they have to write well in the language, uh, in, in the language, in English in this case. And finally, teachers need to have an awareness of what exactly they're assessing. I don't mean the exams, but the kind of ongoing assessing that they're doing of their student success, trying to distinguish what's a language problem, what's a content problem, making decisions about when to give feedback, what to give feedback about. OK, so the, then the last point I want to make is for any CPD programme, there are a number of features which make it effective. And within Cambridge, we've tried to put together to summarise the features of effective professional development programmes in this um, acronym of INSPIRE, uh, so that all programmes should be thinking about the impact they want, impactful, need to think about where students are starting from, not students, teachers in this case, where the participants are starting from, so needs-based. It needs to be long-term, can't just be a single event, it needs to be like a three-year plan. Peer collaborative in terms of teachers working together to develop. In practice in terms of trying things out in the class and see what happens. Reflective in terms of reflecting on how well their ideas apply in their classroom and evaluate in terms of seeing has the program led to the changes that you intended at the beginning? Now, I said that quite quickly. All of it is available in this uh, PDF, free, freely downloadable from our website. Uh, if you just search for effective professional development um, on the cambridge.org website, uh, I'm sure you'll find it easily. And that was all I was going to say. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments, any points you want to raise, you can email me on this address. Uh, I've, I've also put a link there to um, a document where we've collected a number of really interesting uh, articles and books if you're interested in English as a medium of learning uh, and to find out more about it. So thank you very much. Thank you for your time.